Hello, my name is Patrick Webb, and we continue our discussion of the chemistry of plaster in Heritage Building with Part 5, gypsum. Gypsum is really a unique material. It has incredible properties as a binder. We'll be covering some of those. What is gypsum? Well, gypsum is a salt of the calcium family, and it occurs in nature in a couple of different ways. Well, one of those could be the introduction of, of sulfur through some sort of volcanic activity to limestone and it'll precipitate as a salt that way. Uh, another way that's occurred in the past is the drying out of lagoons that would continually fill and dry out and again gypsum would precipitate as a salt. Well gypsum is found all over the world but really only in a limited uh, number of areas is it in such quantity what they call massifs dozens of feet thick, long veins of it, that it's practical to, to mine it. So in some sense, it's, it's a limited uh, material. Well, we can jump into the chemistry of gypsum. Uh, as I have written here, it says that gypsum is a hydrous calcium sulfate. Hydrous, of course, indicating water. And that's one of its unique properties. Here's the calcium sulfate portion, but it's chemically combined even though it's in a dry state, chemically combined to water. So it's two parts water. Well, in the manufacturing process, uh, there's a couple degrees to which you can cook gypsum. Uh, what we have commonly understand to be plaster of Paris is cooked at a relatively low temperature, 150 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And that produces uh, basically the reverse of this formula, two parts calcium sulfate and attached to one part water. So essentially three quarters of the water um, dissipates during the baking. If you continue um, to bake that gypsum at a higher temperature, about 400 degrees Celsius, 850 degrees Fahrenheit, you get what they call anhydrous gypsum. Anhydrous meaning no water. And then it has a chemical formula of just calcium sulfate. These materials are a little bit different. They work differently as plasters, but both are used as plasters. Well, what are some of the uh, unique properties that I was talking about in reference to gypsum? because it has that ability to chemically combine with water and then return to a dry state, gypsum is what they call self-binding. really um, makes it unique among the, the heritage binders, the degree to which it can, it can self-bind. What that means in practical terms as a plaster is um, it's not as dependent on the aggregates or, or fibrous materials for strength. Its ability to self-bind allows it to be built up in very thick coats. It's not a problem to apply gypsum two inches thick at a time. Also for molding and ornamental work, it's very convenient because uh, at times you will need to build up uh, a mold and, and sometimes be several inches thick for very large cast. Not a problem with gypsum plaster. Also, it has a very quick set, at least the um, hemihydrate form, and uh, for molding plaster that's terrific as well because you can uh, pour the gypsum plaster in a wet state, slurry into a mold, and typically within anywhere from 20 minutes to 45 minutes uh, you can take it out of the mold and, and go on to the, the next casting. Well, we're going to cover a little bit more uh, of this chemistry and how, how it occurs as a cycle in a subsequent video. Like lime, gypsum has a cycle. But what are good specifications for gypsum? Well, of course, in interior, gypsum has historically been used um, as a plaster. And again, that quality of chemically combining with water comes into play. Because uh, it's used as a fire stop. So if you have gypsum plaster that's installed at one or two inches, it'll give you a certain length of time that fire can occur on one side of a partition and uh, it takes time to remove um, the 
water from the gypsum. And what happens is, even if the fiber is burning at 1500 degrees on one side of the partition, on the other side, the temperature um, stays well below um, the temper needed to spontaneously combust. That's because the gypsum is off-gassing steam, and steam suppresses the temperature. Um, that occurs um, at this state, but uh, it requires even more energy to drive off that last 25% of water. So even after the majority of the steam uh, has been off-gassed 75%, you still have additional protection with the 25%. Um, so hopefully, by the time that, uh, that as you're getting closer to that water being exhausted, what often happens is the fire will run out of oxygen and it will starve itself out. In exterior, um, a lot of folks think that gypsum can't be used in exterior. It's, uh, it's, it soaks up too much water, um, it'll degrade, and um, I would say that that's, that's true of a lot of the gypsums that are produced in the United States. But in other parts of the world, Europe in particular, there's a long history of using gypsum plasters in exterior. And um, just as, to use an illustration, I would say that not all cheeses are the same. You could say the same about gypsums. Although they may have the same chemical formulation, um, a lot of times their crystalline pattern makes a difference. And um, how you cook them, the temperature you cook them at, the length of time that you cook them for, barometric pressure you can cook them under, even the small contaminations that may occur in the gypsum itself make a big difference. So they have uh, gypsum renders that I've personally seen in the south of France that have 800 years in exterior. So I think um, that about covers it for gypsum. Next we'll take a look at the uh, gypsum cycle.